Everybody cuck your mom. <laughs> How low can you blow? Can you blow down low? Can oh. you take it to the shaft? <laughs> like you never, never heft? <laughs> Everybody suck a cock. <laughs> wow. You guys, welcome to another episode One of Broad dick. Topics. <laughs> Two dicks. Three dicks now, y'all. <laughs> I'm Kim Cognon here with my co-host Alex Carlotto. <laughs> What's up, everybody? How's it going? Um, I need to spit my gum out. This oh is my so unprofessional. God. Oh, so unprofessional. Oh, I thought you were gonna spit your gum in your coffee. For I'm putting it on the side of my cup. <laughs> That's one way to do it. Oh my God, that was Puerto Rican of you. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> I never uh, see something so by <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes you can't have freaking help, but you want to take your gun, you want to put it on your cup, and then you want to do your freaking broadcast show. Because, like, <laughs> this is my podcast. It's broad top. It's, it's here. It's going to stay. It's not going freaking anywhere. This is just one way to get rid of your gun. It's just one way to get rid of your gun. You know, I can spit it in the face of who I want. It's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I just rewatched the last episode of Game of Thrones and I'm so excited. How good is that uh, fucking show? Uh, the last episode, I'm like so annoyed because I've been trying to convince all three of my sisters to get a my sister asked you a question tattoo. Oh, it's my f- that's it's, a really good that would be a really good tattoo. It's the best line yeah. in the entire series, I think. That's it really is good. So good. Do they watch Game of Thrones or do no. they just not get it? They're like, my I made sister them watch the scene and insane they were insane tattoo. For yeah, no I made them watch the scene. She's into like, this fantasy shit. It's dragons and whatnot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's exactly how they treat me. I'm like, you guys don't get it. I mean, it's a crazy These thing to ask of somebody who doesn't watch the show for sure. It's a it's- perfect way to describe <laughs> sisters. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. I mean, their sisterhood is my favorite thing ever. Yeah, it it literally warms my heart. Like. Um, and that last like, episode I, is when, dope. When I watched it, I seriously thought that Sansa was going to kill Arya. Me too. And I was like, oh I no. watched it really recently. I held off and on watching the two most previous seasons really? for like two years. And I watched them like three weeks ago. No. All at once. No. It was the best day ever. That's the best. I got to binge watch Game <gasps> of Thrones like it was a Netflix series. Jealous. Yeah. It took a lot of self-control for like two years to not watch or listen to anybody though. But hey, yeah, it was fucking great. Lord Baelish. So good. That was my that was one leather, of my favorite. Like, the leather turn, like uh, everyone looks at him. <gasps> that feeling. That was one of my favorite moments in the whole series, so honestly. Because you always expect Sansa to be like an idiot or to do the wrong thing and like to not get it fully. And... Yeah, I like when she was like, It's true, I'm a slow learner, but I learn. But I was I like, learn. whoa, bitch. She is, in my opinion, the hottest chick on the show. She's so hot. She's beautiful like her face i know it's it it's looks like control. something you'd put like on a dollar bill like it's like a queen mm-hmm. she's like a fucking she's like a princess yeah she's gorgeous i could and that's like throw up every time i see her it's honestly part of the appeal of the show is just watching people just mm-hmm. watching like hot cersei people. Had, like i mean not cersei um fucking dragon bitch oh da- Danny. that's mine oh that's yours my bad that's why yeah we're on the wrong ones oh mm-hmm. i was like my shit's low i was like turning all the way up hilarious but yeah i'm really into it i love the scene the candle scene where you know how Arya went blind and so she was fighting mm-hmm. blind and then that and then um that girl came into the room with the candle and she just sliced the candle because she could fight in the dark because she was blind Wait, was this season the six? faceless girl the, she this was is training in season with? six i think yeah like a bit further back yeah. Yeah, fucking Arya's dope. I fucking she's such a badass. I'm getting too into it. I'm like, I think she's gonna up, live. I think she's one of the few people who are gonna live. I and- just voted that. Um, what's her name? Is it Alana Mormont, the little queen with the bears? Yeah, I voted that she's. I don't gonna know the names that well because they just have too many names that Le- all. Kinda- Liana, 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 Liana yeah. Mormont. Yeah, I voted that she's gonna hold the throne. You it's think so? Be hers. She's so cute when she sent her sixty five soldiers. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> you just like a little bitch with power. Yes. She's like, and she's so powerful already. Around. Imagine when she's older. It's she's true. She's fucking rule shit. 
That's a good one. I don't know. I I have no I don't even like to especially with a show like this where there's so much going on, like anybody who thinks they know what's gonna happen is sorely mistaken. Yeah. They're gonna throw something crazy that nobody anticipated. <laughs> And so it's going to hurt everybody. It's going to hurt all of our feelings. Mm-hmm. All of our favorite characters are going to die. Yep. Like at least 40% of people who you like are going to die. And that's really a low estimation. Yep. So, yeah, we have a lot of despair to prepare for in the next six weeks, I guess. I didn't know you watched Game of Thrones, honestly. This is what? the first time we've ever talked about it. I yeah. love Game of Thrones. I had no idea. It's like one of the... It's like one of the few culty things that I've gotten into. So good. I I love it. It's so good. I There's love it. There's just so many aspects of the storyline where you're like, ah. And it's like the <clears throat> the acting is so good. The casting was incredible. And like there's just like little details. I could like, see you ruling House Congdon. Thank you. I actually watched <laughs> that. Well, the voice that I do, hello, Alex, that came from like a mushroom trip because I had never watched Game of Thrones and then I binged watched like six seasons in like a month. Right. It was like crazy. It's the best. And um, then I did mushrooms after like I finished, like the day after. And then I went to this beautiful beach, El Matador Beach, and it looked like a scene from Game of Thrones. So then I thought in my head, I like fucking lost my mind <laughs> that I was like, the ruler. House Congdon doesn't yeah, appreciate I, no. your disloyalty. You remember Emily that came on the show, right? Love her. She was with me. I was spitting was this, at people that were coming to me. Was this the mushroom trip my... where your friend shat all over no, the no, no, beach? No, no, no. This was the first one before okay. that. This is the first time we were. It was that beach. But it was the first time we went. That's why we went back. Before we your so memory fun. of it was soiled forever. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It. So you were basically, in your mind, you were like a... um. Like a, a lord or whatever, whatever the women are called. I was lady. some powerful bitch, yes. You're, you're and, lady Congdon. And I was like on this rock. Of course you were. And, powerful bitches belong on rocks. Yeah, and I was on this rock and like people would come by and I'd be like, who are you? And, like Emily was like watching me from a towel like a little lady like being normal on that like mushroom. Like kind of momming you. Like just, wa- like, just like, kind of laughing at everything. Okay. I was like being a clown for yeah. her. <laughs> As you do when you're tripping, it's everybody's favorite thing. <laughs> Kim I is like a the fucking jester. She's when I'm literally tripping. a court jester. It's crazy. <laughs> I thought I thought one time that she was just gonna like everybody stop talking. I thought she was gonna get up and juggle. <laughs> <laughs> People tell me they love tripping with me. Though. It's the <laughs> dude. I don't know how if you could capture the experience and sell it, we would be millionaires. <laughs> just I mean, tripping with Kim. It's it I bet that would be a VR or something for tripping with Kim. Virtual no reality. If you actually Ooh. could trip with me, just pay. Pay five hundred dollars because it has it's it worth, costs a lot. It's worth seven fifty. It's worth seven fifty. It's worth seven hundred and fifty dollars a trip with you. Wow. It's so much fun. Thank you. It really is. I think so too. It's like, a lifetime just, of memories. Not just any pleb should be able to pay for a trip with Kim. Yeah. Like you have to have your shit together. You know what? I'm selling trips with me. You should. If you want to trip out with me, this sounds dangerous. Do I have to for pay? Me. I don't want to no, pay. No, we could trip for free. Yay! But I would. I mean, it's it's like you have to pay seven fifty, and I'll. It's trip a with show. You. It's like picture. Um, like if you were thinking of dropping tickets on like Hamilton or something like that. This is twelve hours of a better Hamilton. Save your money. You could fucking do better. You could spend seven fifty on a primetime front row seat to the best show in town. I am very, 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 very on when I'm on acid I mean. or mushrooms. It is, it's crazy, you guys. It is, it's whatever, it, whatever I am on acid is whatever I am soberly trying to find on it's stage. It's like Kim finds herself. <laughs> She's like, this is what I was born to do and who I was it's born to be. It's fucked up, right? It's insane dude <laughs> like i see like she has like an aura and she just takes over everybody in the room fucking shuts the fuck up first of all because nobody can everybody's aware that whatever they contribute to the conversation is not going to be as funny as what she's doing and like you almost can't even play along like you just go you just go like an energizer bunny I'm, it's because i'm not it's playing great it's, <laughs> it's great it's real in my head it's so real harrington i have a question for you he can't hear us, I don't think. He's going to get on the mic. <sighs> Let's see what he, how much he would pay. Oh, he's going to shit, shit on it. Oh, yeah. I know. He's not going to give me as much. What? Okay, with, uh, this is an honest question. If 
Now think back to the times that, how many times have we tripped together? Um, I don't know, two or three. Two or three. Um, and think back to all the times and how you felt tripping with me. How much would you pay for an experience if you didn't know me to trip with Kim? How much do you think that value of that experience would be? Wait, you're saying like strangers come into your... And we take acid together and they get to hang out for, while we do acid. Yeah, until the end of the high. Um, 50K, but you got to donate Whoa! like 10% to charity. Bananas. He knows me well. It needs to be accessible, Kimberly. I mean, God, I thought he was going to go in the other direction. That was I amazing. thought he was going to say 50 cents and I was going to be hurt. I mean, I thought he was going to say the price of the drugs plus, you know. See, he knows. He's been there. To yeah. him, it's 50K. To Alex, it's 450. Everyone I feels... I 750. Oh, okay. everyone, God damn it. Everyone feels whatever they feel. <laughs> fine. Harrington loves you more than I do. It's finally come out. Jesus. Um, hell yeah. Um... Yeah, it is fucking crazy. So yeah, okay. So I was it shouldn't on- break the fucking bank, Kim. God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> you know, I think seven fifty is a good number. Yeah, it's a good number. It's good. That's what I would sell it for. Uh, but yeah, I was on this rock, and I was like, "Oh, the rock!" I, I nearly forgot. <laughs> I was like sitting on this rock, and people would come by, and Emily said she would see me like crawl out of a hole from the rock, <laughs> like a crab almost, like. Like you found space enough for your body underground. <laughs> well, then I'd crawl to the top real quick when I heard someone coming. I'd be like, who are you? Like, and I'd like have this banana. Like a little troll. <laughs> but I had like sand and stuff on my face because I was like rolling in the sand. But yeah, so I would like pop out like a little hermit. <laughs> and I would, and, and I also had this like banana. This I is like where the idea of you patrolling the area because it's your bra. Oh well, yeah, it was like my area. And then like I would like pop out and like I had this banana, but it was like had sand on it, but I wouldn't let it go. Like it was like you weren't like you were sort of planning to continue eating it. You just had to figure out how. Like maybe you'd wash it in the ocean or something. You'd I don't know what the plan was with the banana. Okay. I wasn't there yet, but I was holding it, and I would like pop out and I'd be like who are you and they'd be like hi like people just walking by the beach and like get out of here and I'd crawl back into the hole and Emily would be like you can't really yell at people like I know you're being funny and I would be like cracking up like <laughs> and I'm like this is my rock and anybody who crosses must cross me and I would dare you to what it's- be your business here <laughs> yeah. it was like and it would just be like a family like with little sand buckets walking we by we thought we'd look at this rock <laughs> And I'd be like, well, have a look, but then keep it moving. <laughs> and I was like that. And then there was a woman in a wedding dress, and she was like just taking beautiful pictures at this beach. On her wedding day. And I, and I kept going up to um, Emily, and I kept going like, wouldn't it be funny if I like rolled to the background of the picture with my banana? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, but you're doing it as you're saying, because I was like using me doing it as the example. But I kept <laughs> actually. Wouldn't it be funny <laughs> if I did this? This thing right here that I'm doing right now was not be fucking hilarious. Emily? And so I was like rolling around like on mushrooms. Like she's like, like you've done it. You're good. <laughs> it was just a lot. I'm a lot. Um, yeah, you're great. You're so much fun. I, I literally can't handle how much fun you are. It's on a drugs. lot. I have a lot of fun on drugs. It's why I shouldn't do them as much. Yeah. It's oh, a good rock than- in the ocean. I would have. I would be having a Little Mermaid moment. If you come to LA, we can go. You know that moment? And we can trip there. We would have to trip there because I've heard too many stories of you tripping there. I've had such just, different tripping experiences there. Yeah. I can't go there sober anymore. Yeah. It's not that kind of beach to me. <laughs> Honestly. It's just not that beach anymore. <laughs> once you've rocks? done <laughs> once you've done mushrooms multiple times at one specific beach, you can't look at it sober. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're looking at the rocks and you're like, but they're not moving. Oh, and so funny, because this is this is literally I think it's one of the top most beautiful beaches in California is voted. It's like, it looks like fucking another world. It is crazy. Yeah, it I want to go there and get stupid high. But like, like I want to get illegal high. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like where people are like, take care of them. It was so fun. The first time me and Emily went during this trip, we had just, we'd taken the mushrooms in the in the cab, in the Uber. So we'd it. start tripping by the time we got to the beach. And we're walking down and we're like, starting to trip really hard we took a lot and we're starting to trip really hard so we just settled where we were just Mm -hmm. to like sit we're like we just need to sit for a second this is becoming a lot (laughs) yeah i gotta get used to this new fucking lifestyle of being this high there's also this thing that i do and i feel like other people do on mushrooms where they get stuck in a place 
Like you'll stay in one place for too long looking at things when you're like, we have this whole world around us. And then when you move on, if like that part feels like a segment of like your earlier times of life. Yes. Like like, Whoa. That's what the trip, that's what like, I think that that's what they refer to when they call it a trip because it really feels like you spent 10 years and like six hours ago you were just sitting and looking at that puddle and that puddle meant everything and since then you've learned a billion new things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fucking journey. So we're sitting in this one area and Emily is She's this is probably her sh- second time doing mushrooms ever, and we'd never tripped hard, so she's like tripping. And she's like learning what's happening, and like, I see, and I look up, and I kind of realize that like we're at this like section of the beach that is like not really a beach. Like somehow we went to the wrong stairs, too far to the left, and the part of the beach we're at is like there's trash. There's like a this weird it's not green taken care of. Like it's, there's this green sewer that's like coming out with like dead birds in it, like dying next to us. It's not and it's for like people. And and this happened because I was like getting anxious sitting because we were tripping so hard. We we're just like kind of staring at our towels for a minute, trying to like collect our thoughts. And I got up and I just walked for a second and like I peeked over just like this little corner and it was like a heaven. Like the beach was like, <laughs> like a, it was like, I like look over this corner and it was like glowing all these beautiful <laughs> colors and like, Bert, and you it were was seeing like, the difference in energy between the spot that you were in, which was like all bad energy and like w- yes. we're not supposed to be here, yes. to like people having fun at the beach. Like, so I c- go walk back to Emily, and as soon as I get back to her, I'm like so excited to tell her that there's more. Like, this is not <laughs> where we need to be. And I'm like, Emily, and she's like, I'm never moving. That's the first thing she says. And I'm like, All right, I just got to tell you something. I was like, there is something around this corner. (laughs) And I'm like trying to like slowly convince her. She's like, I just don't want to move. I don't want to walk right now. This is fun. That feels really nice out here. And I go, no, you don't realize what's around the corner. (laughs) I've seen heaven, dude. (laughs) You're going to, and you're going to freak out when you see this. It's crazy how that move, like where we were, there was like three college kids and they were listening to EDM music. Mm. Like, so you, it was like trash and Mm. EDM music. And, and if you're at any other beach, it was fine. Mm-hmm. It was just like any other beach, but like it was a clear difference. Just night and day. Yes. And when we went to hit that tre- threshold of moving, we left. Yeah. We got to the section where like there is these houses where you kind of can't, you're not supposed to walk, but there's these houses and like you kind of almost walk under the, the sticks of the house. You know what I'm know saying? What I mean. Yeah, they're like, like, under the porch. It's like held up because of like flooding because yes. of the ocean. Yes. Okay. So we're like walking under there, but all of that is just um, rocks, like beautiful pebbles. Mm-hmm. So we're tripping, and every time the water like sucks the rocks out, the sounds, it was like, it was like you couldn't hear anything else. It was like, <laughs> and then it'd come back. I was like, and then these fucking I don't even know how to explain it it's not as good on podcast it was just the trippiest thing in the world bro yo the sounds it made that's the best it was like crazy it was so fun oh uh, I had an experience uh, like similarly to where you you turn the corner and you're like this is a new world now yeah it was w- one of the first times I was I ever did acid and I was like stupid I was like 18 and um we also did like a little dose of this like research chemical that's supposed to cause extra visuals when you take acid. So we did like acid and a little bit of like 2CI, I think it was called, or something something to that vein. Okay. And we left campus and like went north of campus where there's just like woods. And my friends had promised me that like a week earlier, they all tripped and they walked through the woods, past the woods, and there was a really dope spot to hang out with like a creek and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. They're like, you gotta get through a field to get there, it's gonna be great. Okay. And we go and it's like no trespassing spots and we're like in Pennsylvania, I'm getting sketched out, I'm like tripping really hard, like for like this, not the first time, like second or third time. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I'm like all nervous because we're in this no trespassing zone in the woods and I'm freaking out and whatever. And we finally get to like the edge of the woods Mm -hmm. where it opens up. And when they said we have to cross a field, it was just literally the biggest expanse of like slightly hills in a field with yellow flowers (gasps) coming up from every spot. It was like the sound of music. It was like, and literally the feeling of like, going from the woods 
to this fucking field (laughs) while I'm peaking on acid was the best best experience of my there's life. no way I'm to not describe it to say i it. feel i feel bad i almost feel like a druggie being like you don't understand the trip bro <laughs> yeah. i but really like, am not ashamed to say it was the best experience of my life being it's like, crazy this is freedom i've had some of the best times of my life doing uh psychedelics yeah like literally what you feel in your heart of like the the you could just feel the energy of a spot and you're like whoa these flowers just live here and they die here and this is it for this field and it just hit me like a ton of bricks you know what i don't think about when i'm on psychedelics i don't think about my phone i don't think about mm -hmm. social media i don't think about who hates me i don't think about like my career and how far i am it's like it is pure childhood like excitement. Mm-hmm. Like it is like what you see when you're a kid. Like you're excited to be you again. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm cool. I'm fun. This is great. Everything's yeah. great. Everything's yeah. cool. Yeah. Crazy. So good. Even even like the scary part of tripping is fun. Yeah, it's like being it's scared like when you're a kid. Like when you're yes. purposefully scared when you're of with yourself. your friends, and you're like, "Let's walk through the graveyard tonight," and you're like, "This is a bad idea." And you're with your friends, you're all giggling and like pushing each other. That's what it feels like. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you know, it's all like a prank that you played on yourself. You're like, yeah. this is, it's all the drugs. It's okay." So you have that in the back of your mind. You could be a little scared and be a little like, "Yeah, well, it's so fun." Yeah, uh, we're druggies. We're drug people. <laughs> yeah, we're druggies. We're Damn disgusting. It. We're disgusting pigs. No, I don't know. I just, uh, it's so strange with psychedelics when you really love them because they're so demonized. Like, I know. When you're growing up. And I it's know. Frustrating to be an enthusiast and be like, how do I use this safely and how am I supposed to, like, it just sucks. I know. Like, are they, are they, my all mom right thinks it's like crazy. My mom, it's so funny the difference that we have. Like, my mom, I won't touch Xanax, I won't touch like any like pills like that. And my mom will but she won't like even think about mushrooms. And I'm like, mushrooms are so much less worse than a Xanax. So much less worse. (laughs) Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like they'll, uh, I I try to judge it by whether what I'm consuming is gonna like make me think more or think less. So like Xanax and like alcohol, like any kind of like real downer like that, just turn, shuts your thoughts down. Whereas like weed and like, trippy psychedelic things they make, make you, you think, more creative yeah yeah like what and it's only one of those is illegal like so you start putting the pieces together yeah. and you're like well what's going on here everybody's got it backwards yeah and then also like to take into consideration like over the course of evolution before we had like doctors and like studies to say like before we classified certain things as drugs mm-hmm. like mushrooms were growing from the ground and people were eating them yeah it's like our ancestors probably munched on that shit all day at a certain point. Like, yeah. I'm sure we're fine, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Are we? I don't know. Are we? We've been dazing into each other's eyes, tripping about tripping for three hours. I don't know, Kim. Do you smell toast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I'm due for another trip. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm ready. I, I, you know, it's that's another thing too is that like it calls to you. It does. Mm-hmm. I start. Um, it's almost like I start feeling like I'm tripping. Like there's this weird yes. feeling that mushrooms gives me when I take them. It's like um, it's almost. Um, this is so weird. To do you describe. sometimes? Can I can I interrupt you? I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. When somebody puts mushrooms in your hand, do you get? Like I feel the trip. My stomach drops. Sometimes. Like you know when you're on a roller coaster and you're going down. Yeah. My stomach drops when someone puts them in my hand. Like I can feel that. Like you feel them. But when I'm like wanting to trip, my um, I feel whatever that feeling is when mushrooms are just starting to kick in. Mm-hmm. That little sort of lightheaded buzz where your body is like tingly mm-hmm. and like you kind of want to yawn. I get that feeling, and then I'll know like I should trip. I should trip soon. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah, let's do it. Yeah. We're going to paint our Bob Ross. Oh, <gasps> yes. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll plan it. Mm-hmm. For real. For next week. For next week. Like, you'll come over, paint a Bob Ross. Yes. And we'll put it on the YouTube channel. Fuck yep. yeah. Yeah. That sounds so oh, Bob fun. Ross. Bob Ross. And he's the best energy to trip with, too. Oh, yeah. I've tripped with him without painting. The first time I watched Bob Ross was literally like a year and a half ago. And I was on acid, and me and Emily decided to take acid at Santa Monica Pier. 
and we weren't having that much fun. And then I forgot that I had a podcast with Sarah at the comedy store. Right. So we took an Uber to the comedy store and she had Bob Ross on in the background of the podcast. And I was watching, I'm trying to focus on the podcast and I just paused and I was like, what the fuck? It's I've never watched Bob Ross. This is crazy. How is that a waterfall? He's so good. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. And his like tone of voice, he's like, well. In the beginning, does he tell you which paints you need? What yeah. colors? Oh, really? And mm-hmm. what kind of brushes and stuff? Uh, not brushes, but I have an array of brushes. We'll be good. <gasps> Me mother oil paints. She's taken it up very recently. I used to paint as a kid. Whoa. And then my mom recently took it up, which is so cute. Her paintings are so fucking cute. They are. Yeah. Aw. She painted a ballerina. Aw, because she loves you. She loves me. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking cute. Yeah, I'm excited. We'll do that. All right, and before we keep moving, I want to take a second to give a shout out to our fucking sponsors, the loves of our damn lives. It's Smoked Honey. Smoked Honey, they did me good. They gave me one, this is a new kind of pen. I haven't had this before. This one has CBD and THC in it. And I it's have a, a pen four to right one now. ratio, right? Four, four to one four. CBD to THC. And it's so good. It's act- I didn't realize that it was something that I was missing in my life. I've been smoking it. I'm feeling so relaxed, not super high. Like if, if t- the THC is too much for you, you can do a little combination of both, which is what I like about this. Fucking dope. It's like I'm getting a little high, but I'm also medicating and it's fucking great. I haven't cracked open the CBD one yet. Oh, I'm you're going to love it. You know, I'm THC centric, sister. I see you, THC centric centric there's something for everyone over at smoked honey yeah. so regardless of what you're looking for it's potent like if you want cbd you're gonna get that delivered directly to the system and if you want to get high boy oh boy <laughs> boy oh boy are you going to get high have you come to the right place yes yeah, so they have a bunch of stuff they have uh the cb or er, the vape pens they have the dab darts they have the cleanest distillate you'll find i have to say i'm loving the dab darts i think the dab darts took me a little while to get onto it was i like, agree when i <clears throat> You when learn I, you learn what you can do with them, yeah, which is what we were trying to do now so you don't have to take as long to learn with us. Exactly. The uh, the cartridges are just, they're such an easy option. You just plug them in and go and literally like inhale and you're good, which makes them really appealing. But the dab darts are like secretly just as awesome. You just have yeah. to know what you're doing with them. Oh, yeah. Which is whatever you want to basically <laughs> like... Yeah, the possibilities are endless with the dab darts. They're fucking amazing. I love them. I roll my blunts with them. I put them in my bowls. I, f- I, fucking- I dab them. I eat them. Mm-hmm. I'll put it in my tea. Like, I don't give a shit. I'll yeah. put them anywhere. Tea is really good. Mm-hmm. Mix it with a little honey. It's amazing. Love it. Uh, all right. So if you're over the age of 21 and you live in the California area, hit up SmokedHoneyCA.com or follow them on Instagram at Smoked Honey and tell them Kim and Alex sent you. Tell them they're all daddies. They're all daddies. And now let's move on. Today's National Pet Day. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I have no pets. Have you ever had a pet? Mm-hmm. What, what well, one? like, we were Puerto Rican, so we'd get, like, dogs until they were stopped being puppies and then sell them, like, very Puerto Rican. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I went through That's puppies. So like sad. It was. You only and get... I would, like, love them, and my mom wouldn't get it. Kimberly, don't get too close to the puppy. <laughs> He's growing. <laughs> like, we would, like, we, I remember, he like, Florida had him. this He's hurricane one time, and we found this little puppy. And he was like so cute, you and like we saved it. It was just wa- everybody was leave- evacuating. This puppy was, was just on the side of the road. Puppy? And he was a little little uh, puppy, and he was hey, so cute. And then nice. my mom was like, "We could keep him, name him." So we named him. And a week later, when the power went out and we had this new puppy, <laughs> and there was no power, or food, or water, my mom was like. I've been asking people, and that dog, he has spots on his tongue. That means he's a mix, and he's gonna get violent. We gotta give him up. No, isn't that fucked? Oh no, she had you name him first? Yeah. What did you name him? I think it was actually a girl. What did you name Roxy. Her? No. Yeah. Girl, a little girl puppy? Yeah. Oh, my heart. And yeah, and then we got another dog named Lady, and she made me give her to our grandma. Lady. Lady had the best life, though. We gave Lady to my stepmom's parents, and she would just. Grew up to had be a, a custom true lady. bed. Yeah. She was just. She would fucking. She was like a snob. That makes you feel good, at least. Yeah, and she just had a custom bed, and like she would need her food unless you put cheese on it. She a like, poodle? <laughs> no, she was a uh, a Labrador, a golden lab cocker spaniel. Oh, how sweet, lady! Yeah, how sweet. She was cute. I love dogs. I want another dog. 
I want a dog and yeah. I've never wanted a dog before. I want another dog so bad. I, I thought that when my dog passed away, I would be like, Okay, like no pets for a while, but mm-hmm. I want one so bad. Really? Yeah, I miss my little baby. Can you get a puppy so you can bring it to the studio? Well, that's the thing. If I got a puppy, I would have to bring it to the studio. Yeah. That, that would be the issue. Like I would have to have the, the dog with me pretty much all day. Mm-hmm. And I just don't know whether I could make time to train a dog to be able to stay with me quietly and not poop on the studio floor where Ralph will have a heart attack and mm-hmm. like... It's just, it's a ton of effort. I have to decide whether Puppies I'm Puppies are so easy to train though. Yeah. This like is you, really fucked up, but every dog I've ever had, I've been able to train very easily for like the two weeks I've had it. Literally, I'm a good dog trainer. trainer. Yeah, I'm a really good dog trainer. I mean, I know like we have access to Justin Silver, who's like a huge dog trainer. Like we, w- I would probably be able to do it, but it's just like. Just do it. I want like, a puppy around here. Do you think. They would be okay with a puppy running around. Like I wouldn't want to keep her in a Who bag want all day. A puppy running around. I don't know, chewing up cables and stuff. I don't know. Your boyfriend on the company. <laughs> Maybe you put in a go work for my puppy. <laughs> well, what kind of puppy are we talking? <laughs> We're talking a very small little puppy, tiny, tiny you puppy, get a tiny baby poop. pug. Tiny puppy, tiny poop. What kind of dog? Well, I had a Maltese and I was really obsessed with him. So I sort of want to get another Maltese. Maltese are he was so my baby. Cute. Please get a Maltese. Yeah. This and is probably was, not the most fun conversation. When, but When he was born. Oh, my God. He was so tiny, Kimmy. L- Fluffball. Uh, yeah, they're so sweet. I want one. I don't know. Well, my um, I'll d- push for it. I don't know if I ever told you this, but my... I had such bad luck. I mean, I guess whenever your pets die, it's like bad luck. But my hamster, when I was a kid, died on picture day. What? Fourth grade. Did I ever tell you that? No. Like the morning of picture day, I got up, got ready, found my hamster dead, and then just cried the rest of the day and got to school. And I remember my uh, teacher pulling me aside and being like, like, you have to take your picture today. So... Like, I know it's really upsetting. Like, when you lose a pet, it's devastating. Like, I remember having a one-on-one talk with the teacher who was like, you need to stop crying so you could take your picture. Like, oh, I'm no. sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Were your were eyes all red in your picture? I mean, I think I retook it that year. Oh, no. So you should have just bought that one for the memory, right? honestly. Remember when Webster died? <laughs> <clears throat> My cousin thought his hamster was dead and he buried it. And then he found out that they hibernate. No, that's fucked up. Mm-hmm. He found little scratch marks on yeah no. he dug it up and then it was dead <laughs> oh no that's, that's sad fucked up. did lewis ever tell you about the his- turtle i just thought of that when you said the scratch marks <laughs> it is fucking so fucked up i can't believe he tells that story out loud i'm like that's something you hold in and you just have that guilt I with mean, you until you die you know what i'm saying like yeah that's something you don't let out of the in the ether He's proud of it i feel like He's if you proud of it. if you listen to this show you must somehow have already come along this story but Lewis fucking really brutally killed his turtles <laughs> as a kid. Like, it's bad. He didn't, like, murder them. Well, he murdered them, yes. It was almost worse. <laughs> <laughs> he just got turtles and then... He said he was really excited to get turtles. They and were then, his friends. And then he just... It, Hold on, and their then names were Michelangelo or- and Raphael. I know this story so well. <laughs> Can you tell it? I don't know it. <laughs> he got them. He named them. Um, well, no, he got one of them like that was like a pet turtle and he like loved it, was so excited. And then he decided he wanted it to have a friend. So he got just like because he didn't want to torture it with being alone. Yeah. So he got just like a feral turtle <laughs> to be its friend, <laughs> just like a wild turtle to be its friend. <laughs> and he put them in a box and they definitely started fighting. And he was like, I don't know what to do about it. They'll get along. I'll just put them in this box and put them under my bed. And then he just didn't feed them for like three weeks and they starved to death. After together. they like ate off of each other. They ate each other and they starved to death. What a horrible death. What, what a horrible, a horrible fucking death. <laughs> Those poor turtles. I am like he sick. Said that, like months later when he remembered he had turtles, he opened up the box and there were just scratch marks of <laughs> the turtles trying to get out. I'm sick. <laughs> it's fucked up. Imagine the smell of that box. It's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that's your boyfriend. No. Yeah, you love him. <laughs> like, it happens when you're a kid. I mean, it's like how you understand how he you said he to- could hear them scream for food <laughs> as he was in bed. I was gonna say it was like maybe how you ah! learn. 
what's that? I'm Maybe how you learn like to like what life means. Like when you're a kid, you got to fuck it up once. I don't know. I'm I mean, no, I've definitely fucked doubt. up. I feel like I wish I, I wish I walked my dog more. I wish I like took him out more. I wish I kind of respected his I hit my dog once because I thought like I th- like they were because I watched a puppy training video and it said you hit him with like the newspaper in the nose and I like hit my and dog. How bad did you feel after when I you mean, looked at I him? I still Your heart, like my heart sinks. Literally, I, I remember I, I hit him and then I looked at my boyfriend. He was like, "You shouldn't hit the dog." And then I was like, this thing came over me and I was like. Literally to this day, I like lose sleep over that it. Feel, uh, me too. Because I like smack him in the nose, like no, no, oh. and he was just this little puppy, and like uh, yeah. But I didn't know. Yeah, I remember it was like a. Yeah. I had I had like looked up a video on how to do, it, and I was like, I guess this is how you train a dog, dude. You don't have to tell me. I have a ton of guilt for how I treated my dog as like a ten and eleven year old kid when I just didn't understand. Like I just. I didn't walk him every day. I just didn't take care of him properly. And I you have guilt. I will live with that guilt. Forever. I know. I know. I like, feel the same way about hitting my dog on him, the nose for biting my new digital camera. Thinking of him looking up at me and being afraid of me. Or, I know. Oh, don't even remind me. It really fucks cry. me up. I, I literally lose sleep. It's the, This is one of the things. There's a few things in life right now that I'm like, you know, obviously everybody has personal shit that they're upset about. But this is something that. Mine too. At night, me hitting my dog that one time is one of mine. I cry like real tears almost like I'd say at least four nights a week you have to let that like, go that's too many over being like whoa I that's... wish I treated my dog better that, what the fuck were you raping it no he just like he just was lonely I feel oh I'm scared for him he's fine now oh. yeah he's <laughs> fine now I guess let it go I'm sure no he's got bigger fish to fry he's figuring out the other side is it fucked up that animals do that to me way worse than humans like it's like well, if I think like, like can't help it, and little puppies just trust you, and I, you're just all, everything to them. Like I feel guilt that if I think about like pain, like I lost two two important like figures in my life this year, my my grandma and my dog. And if I think of pain that my grandma endured over the course of her life, it doesn't hit me the same as thinking of like. Wh- and I took the best care of my dog as that I possibly could. Yeah, but still, I'm like, but I could have done better. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it fucks you up. It fucks you up. Happy National Pet Day. Everybody. Well, I I googled the sounds of a turtle screaming, so no. this is what Lewis heard at night. No. They sound a lot like lawnmowers. <laughs> I think it's gummy. Certainly don't hear a turtle, sister. What the fuck? It's just like hissing, maybe? Is baby that the sound screaming. of it? <laughs> That's not what they sound like. <laughs> That's what Lewis heard at night? <laughs> Bro, he's sick. They sound like little girls? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's so cute. It's literally the size of a penny. That can't be real. I don't think that's real. <laughs> I hope not. If I Google another baby turtle screaming and it's the same sound, I'm going to scream. Yeah, no. I mean, it's fucked up. But, you know, I wonder if Lewis ever lost sleep over those turtles. No. <laughs> he's fine. I have a friend who boiled her turtle by accident. <laughs> that's what he heard for no. sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> It sounds like hell. No. <laughs> Under his bed. That's why Lewis is so fucked up. This is what he fell asleep to every night. <laughs> That's two turtles screaming at each other. That is not okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Bro. It explains a lot. All right, Lewis. It's time for... Lewis. I'm your mother, and when I say it's time for fucking bed, it's time for bed, you piece of shit. All right, Mom. Good night. I love you. I'm turning out the lights now. Click. All right. Well, dear God, thank you for another day. You really blessed me. I hope everything is good, and I hope that I sleep well tonight. <laughs> He hears it in his dreams. That's really bad. (laughs) I respect him. Like, he's my friend and my boss who I respect so much, and we all have to live with what he did. 
That is wild. That's to me. crazy. You have to live with that. I know. That's crazy. That's fucked up. My friend um, had turtles. It might have been a turtle. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That like we we took it outside on a really hot day and it was like a water turtle mm -hmm. and like we covered it up and its water evaporated and it like boiled to death and, like oh yeah we burnt it with the sun oh no it I, was a total accident imagine that little turtle we wanted it to spend time with us for the day it was like not a big deal until later on when it was the biggest <sighs> deal in the house me and Lewis recently made lobster. Like live lobster, and it was. I don't. I can't do it. I did it rough. once. Rough. You heard them. Well, like no, you don't hear them. Can't but you like, like muzzle them? <laughs> we muzzled them. <laughs> like the th the problem is the humane way to do it is to put a knife through the back of their head, <laughs> real quick. But as I have the knife there, like the point of the knife where it should go, they're like flinching, like they can feel it. Of course they can. So it's easier as a selfish human to just throw them in the pot and run away so you're not experiencing it. That's what I do. But then they're experiencing being boiled to death instead of ah! just... <laughs> terrible. Let's see if we can hear lobster Happy screaming. Happy National Pet Day, everybody. <laughs> Damn. Lobster well, screaming when boiled. I don't think they're actually screaming. I think it's the sound of... <laughs> <laughs> That's an ad. <laughs> Lobsters are just horny. <laughs> really fucking steamy in this pot. Um, no, I think I think it's the sound of like oxygen es escaping their shell or something like that. Yeah. So it's not actually them screaming. It's them losing air pressure on the inside, which is way worse. Yeah, it's fucked up. It's like if you just deflated and a noise came out and then people like another animal was like, oh, she's screaming. <laughs> Wait, I want to hear them scream. How do they not just have sound bites that's just I a know. lobster I'm scream? Like, here we go. Why oh, do I have to watch these families? I don't want to hear the chef. Wait, Listen wait, to the sick wait, family. The Ew, these are white families. Sorry, lobster. You're going in. Who's going to get the table? Hey, lobster sucks to suck. Just wait, wait. Hey, lobster sucks Hi. to suck. They're mocking oh, it. This is number one. Ready. Bye, Bye, new face. Okay, ready? They're oh, bullying it. This is how the white trash consume their food. Yeah. That's a lobster. Get the lid. Get the lid. He has to be covered up. His leg isn't in there. He's fine. No, his tail's not under. Give me the. He's screaming real the, good. I need that thing. You guys. Ew. Where's that thing? Okay, he's in there. Who says he's screaming real good? He's, yeah. In a satisfied tone. They're from fucking Kentucky. Also, they, they don't get really lobster all thin. I want to hear animals screaming. Well, the, it doesn't sound like a scream. It sounds almost like when the teapot whistles. That's what lobster screaming sounds oh, like. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Animals screaming like people. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Happy National Pet Day, everyone. Cat sounds like human. Have you ever heard this? Oh, I like those. When they're like... <laughs> That's an Asian cat, you could tell. I noticed a trend. What is that? That's I noticed weird. a trend, and you could investigate it for yourself. Okay. But, you, like, there's obviously no shortage of cat videos on the internet. Mm -hmm. But all of the craziest ones, mm -hmm. like the ones where you're like, I don't believe a cat could act like that, mm -hmm. all Asian cat owners. It's always an Asian video with Asian text at the bottom or the owner turns the camera around and you see that they're like Asian of some kind. Always. They got some weird cats out there. Wow. I guess you're right. It is. Trust me, I've I've really I've noticed that years ago. I was like, oh, whenever I see a cat video, I like to <laughs> that's get. an Asian cat. Whenever I see a cat video, you I'm said like, it so fast. Oh, I, I like, wonder okay. if they're gonna be Asian. And then sometimes, Whoa. like at the end of the video, the guy turns it around, and I'm like, God damn right, I knew Whoa. it. Yeah, you're onto something. This is a conspiracy. If I've ever known a cons damn conspiracy, yeah, they breed some really strange. <laughs> <laughs> what are they them. doing to the kitties in Asia? That's very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> So, Alex, question for you. Yes, ma'am. Do you want me to read the top glitch in the Matrix of the week? Oh, my God. How could I not? Do you guys, 
question for you guys. Do you guys want me to read the top <laughs> glitch in the matrix for the week? My mom texted me this morning that she experienced a Mandela effect today. No. What is it? She And it's a personal one, so I don't know if it's like a thing for people yet. Okay. But she could have sworn that like four or five years ago, John John Benet Ramsey's father died because mm-hmm. um, she remembered thinking like, oh, now the brother is the only one alive and we'll never hear the true story. Okay. And then this morning he was like on Good Morning America. Or I never something. remember him dying. Do you? I vaguely sort of remember my mom's. I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know if it hits me like that, but she like cared enough that she she's literally texting me. He's fucking dead. I don't understand. Like, <laughs> this is so funny. Oh man, it's so funny. Well, well, <laughs> I used to follow this guy. No, he fucking died. <laughs> <laughs> she's upset. Um, I used to follow this guy, and he had a really good Instagram account, and he basically had people submit like their own glitch in the matrix or like weird things that they remembered and they didn't remember certain the way in the Instagram it didn't have that many followers but like I followed it from like 200 followers to it was like in the thousands and then one day he posted that he had to shut his Instagram down like he that Instagram was shutting his account down yep and it's gone and it was Damn. like such a good post because like people would submit like crazy like good ones shit. where yeah. you're like I think that too actually yeah, yeah. like really good ones and um, I don't know, dude. I don't fucking know. Yeah, people in the Reddit threads will always. I mean, a Reddit is a great place for conspiracies, but like especially that Reddit, they'll be like, CERN is trying to shut down our conversation about this. They don't want yeah. us to know. They're switching our realities. Like it gets really wild in there. Like yeah, left field shit. So okay, so I have a glitch in the matrix one that I haven't read. And I don't think I've I've read on this podcast. This one's called My Sister and I Have the Same Memory. <clears throat> when my sister and I were about six or seven, we are twins, our maternal grandmother took us to Taco Bell that my mother worked at. We both ran into the restaurant, excited to see our mom, and there she was at the register. I remember her pretty smile, wearing her visor, and also very happy to see us. My grandma, following behind us, tells us to grab a table while she orders our food, so my sister and I run to the very back booth so we can see out the window. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm on one side and my sister is on the other. Eventually, my grandma comes back to the booth with our food, and that's that. Years and years later, my sister and I were talking about how we went to the Taco Bell that worked, that mom worked at. My mom overheard us and said that's impossible because she worked at Taco Bell four years before we were born. My sister and I have the same exact memory of being with our grandma, the way the mom looked, the booth we sat in, everything. We were just convinced that we met our mom before we were born. Unfortunately, my grandma passed a long time ago, and she's not here to talk to. I know twins are weird, and my sister and I have lots of weird stories, but this one always weirded me out. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Not the best. I feel like mom, you know, uh, let's benefit of the, like, you know, play devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. I feel like mom works at Taco Bell, right? Yeah. It's like she's probably in and out of a lot of jobs that are kind of similar to Taco Bell, you know? Yes. And it's like easy to kind of mistake maybe I the, totally agree with like that. maybe she picked up at taco bell for a few months and doesn't remember because she switched to you know okay i agree after. i agree yeah it was probably like mcdonald's yeah and they remember that and but they put it in a taco bell because they like taco bell more and one said it and then that's the memory the other one has yep i agree that'll happen this one's good this one's called wrong sound effect so people think that like this is this is one of those where people think that this is a simulation someone's running things and sometimes there's just glitches so, so me and my fiance were making some KFC style chicken the other night. My partner cracked an egg into the bowl. He tapped it on the side of the bowl to crack it like everyone does. Then he lifted the egg over the bowl and f- cracked it fully. When it fell into the bowl, instead of making the usual slop noise, it would. It went ping. That's it was weird. like someone had dropped a tiny piece of metal into the bowl. We both looked at each other and I said, did you hear that? It was like the wrong sound effect played. And he said, yeah, I heard it ping too. We laughed about how someone somewhere was getting fired, but it did weird me out. I like that. That one's a good that one, That one's right? more fun, yeah. Because you know what sounds certain things should make. Yeah. Like when reality is just wrong, it'll fuck you up. Yeah. But like whenever something nearly to that happens to me, it freaks me out and I write it off right away. Yeah. You know me what too. I mean? Me too. I'm like, oh, that didn't happen. I'm, I made a mistake. I've told you about the time I threw my towel and it folded and landed perfectly in the back of my chair, right? Yeah, that's fucked up. It was fucked up. Yeah. It was fucked up. Yeah, you're supposed to walk away I from that and grab it by the about corner it. and tossed it and it was like just like perfectly placed on the back of my chair and I like looked at it and I was like 
How? That's fucked up. How did it do that? Yeah. And you're like, is that fo- whatever force did that? Is that helping me or like, is it fucking with me? Yeah, dude. Like, uh, that's the scary. You know, it's part. a scary feeling too. That's not even like a thing. It's like just being in a room with the when the light bulb goes out. That mm-hmm. happened to me the other night. I was home alone, just on my phone, in the room, and the light just went out. What happens in my house really often? Well. It's not that often, which makes it weirder. It's like when things happen often, you could say like, oh, the power is shoddy or like there's been surges or whatever. But every now and then, like certain lights that work perfectly Mm -hmm. usually will just like dim and flicker a little and then come back on full. And I hate that. That's what freak. It happened to me yesterday in my room and I was looking at my light and I was like, is it flickering a little? I can't even tell. And I was looking really close and I was like, no, it's. It's flickering like a little weird and then I turned it off and I turned it back on again and it was like okay. It's like different. Freaks no, me no, out. No, 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 no. And in that moment that I turned it off, I felt genuinely scared for no reason, just for lo- just for making the decision to put myself in darkness for a second. Yeah. So that's weird. how I feel every time I wash my face in the shower with my eyes closed. I'm like, when I open them, there will be a demon in front of me staring at my face. Sometimes I carry crystals around the house. Really? Like if I'm scared, like sometimes I get nervous. I'm the only person who sleeps upstairs in like a big house. Mm -hmm. So if I have to go to the kitchen and get water or like go to the bathroom and I'm like scared for some for Mm -hmm. no reason, I'll just carry a crystal and I'll like it's like whether it's working or it's a placebo effect. I could be like, no, this is my medicine for being scared. Like now I'm not going to be scared because this crystal is protecting me. Yeah. And it works. It works for you. Yeah. Oh, man. Not me. <laughs> Works real well, actually. Like <clears throat> the other day, I was I walked into the hallway with a crystal, and I was like, "Why am I so not frightened right now? I'd usually be really frightened wow. at this time of night in this like light." The crystals are really doing it for you. It helps me, sister. I don't believe in them. It's just like the telling yourself that they work, you know? Okay, so I just oh. <laughs> I just looked into the comments of this egg ping story. And someone wrote, I wrote some, something similar last year. My daughter dropped a bunch of tiny cut up bits of paper on the carpet. And it sounded like she dropped a bunch of beads on a hardwood floor. It made me feel really weird. Mm. Little pieces of carpet making bead sounds. So it's like Ooh. paper on carpet uh. making the sound of beads on a floor. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> That's fucking me up. I hate it. Oh my god, it's making me it's making my eyes water. I wouldn't even like I'm trying to think if that happened to me, would I drop them again to see if it made the same sound again, but I wouldn't even try. I wouldn't want to know. Ooh, that's a good question. Did he wear a ring that maybe hit the bowl as he cracked open the egg? Ping. Ping. But they said no, no ring. It's like what is How come no one's ever caught it on video? We all have phones. If it's really true and there are glitches in the matrix, how come no one's ever caught it on video? Well, you could always like... Because if it's a simulation, I guess you could take it out of the video. But also in videos, like you can't trust things like audio. Sometimes in, in normal life where you don't notice something, like audio sounds weird for a second in a video for no reason or mm-hmm, this true. and that. Like uh, I was on that exact same Reddit mm-hmm. um, where I saw this video that was like... Uh, like the birds are broken or whatever. It was like so stupid. Mm -hmm. It was like surveillance um, of like somebody's front door, like looking outward Mm -hmm. and a bird comes across the screen and leaves, but you never see his wings flap. They're just out this way. Yeah. And it's because like the, the frame, if the frame rate on the camera is like 60 frames per second and that bird flaps his wings at exactly 50, 60 times a second, it's going to just look like it's still. Right. Just a trick of the camera. Right. People are like freaking out on the thread. Like the birds are broken, man. I've been telling you the birds are just CIA operatives. No, that would be me. The the, Literally, Mm. there's a there's a Reddit page that's so fun. It's called birds aren't real. (laughs) And it's based on like this conspiracy theory that all of the birds died in 2001. Like the last bird died in 2001 no. and they've all been replaced with like drones basically. Yeah, they say pigeons are like spies. <laughs> that, yeah, they think that birds are drones. I mean, this is like people who are beyond like flat earth theory. Wow. They just think whatever they decide is Holy true. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, and then I'm like, what do you make of it when you see a dead bird on the ground? It's clearly biological. It's a bird. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can cut it open and see that there's no wires in it. I'm going to say the last bird didn't die. There's birds dying all over right now. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Well, 
That's my tidbit for the day. The birds That's are my real. That's my tidbit. The birds are real, everyone. You heard the it here first. The birds are real. We don't give a shit. I really like the song we've been singing. Everybody suck a cock. <laughs> really fun. How low can you blow? Can you blow down low? All the way to the flow? Can you blow to the flow? Can you can take you it to the shaft? tip? <laughs> no, I can never know. Now it's time to spit. <laughs> <laughs> One drip. Bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> Two drips. <laughs> bloop, bloop. All right. Come all in <laughs> your fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, you guys. Fucking, we're going to end it on that mature note. Um, thank you again for watching another episode of Broad Topics. This has been so fun. If you're listening right now and you haven't yet, please give us um, a five-star rating on iTunes. Um, give us a fun review. Share this with a friend. Do whatever you have to do to get our names out there. Please do. We would appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Follow me on Twitter, at Kimberly Congdon. And um, I will be in um, Connecticut this Friday. So if you're in Connecticut, come out to Two Roads Brewery. Um, get oh, tickets because yeah, be that's going to sell out. Alex is coming. We're going to hang. It's going to be so much fun. And I'll also be in LA 420 through 424. I'll be judging Roast Battle on that Tuesday night. So come out to the Comedy Store that Tuesday night if you're around and come say hi to me. Fuck yeah. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Alex Scar. Check out all of the shows I produce for Gas Digital Network, Irish Goodbye Podcast, High Society Radio, and In God Free We Trust. And also make sure you listen to Kim's other show, Subway Creatures. Uh, we just did an episode mm-hmm. that I think is going to come out soon. It was really fun. Really fun. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace. Bye. Bye.